By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have got two super cool decks, if I say so myself. I am playing a poison deck. It's green, it's black, it's got the snake, it's got the scorpion. I mean, I've called it Backwater Poison. It's been on the channel before for the Halloween episode, but I wanted to bring it back because I enjoy playing the deck so much. And I'm playing against Yup. He is my opponent today, and he is bringing Rocking Tron to the table. And man, that is another really sweet deck. It's Tron, it's red, and it's got four Rock Hydras in there. How cool is that? Now, before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also get, go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there are several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm going to continue with the deck decks, starting with the deck of my opponent, Rocking Tron. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Rockin' Tron, and I love this list. If you follow the channel, you probably know that I am a sucker for Tron decks. I love them. I love to try to make them work. I love to see other people try to do that. And that's exactly what Yoop wants to do in today's episode, making Red Tron work in this case. And the cool thing is, um, he's playing Rock Hydra. I think, that, I mean, that alone is worth, you know, showing you guys this match. Uh, Rock Hydra, two red and X, and then it comes into play with X plus one plus one counters. And the cool thing is when it takes damage, you can pay one red for each point of damage and then you regenerate a counter. If you don't do that, it's going to lose a counter. So for example, if the Rock Hydra is like a 7-7 seven, seven, and you block it with a 3-3, three, three, it gets three points of damage. So it loses three counters, but you can pay three red to keep the counters on there or one red if you only have one red open and you only lose two counters and so forth, right? That's how you can use it. So obviously it's really cool to play an X spell in combination with Tron, because when you have all the Tron lands, the tower, the mine, and the power plant, then all of a sudden you, the lands tap for more mana, right? So the idea is, what am I gonna do with all that mana? Well, you can cast a giant fireball, very, very efficient, but a little bit boring. What's cooler? Of course, play a huge Rock Hydra. Now, because I play Tron, I know the difficulty with Tron. And the difficulty is when you add one color or two colors, or sometimes even three colors, how are you going to make sure that, you know, you've got the right color mana, that your that your mana makes sense? Because 12 lands are already taken up by the Tron lands themselves. So it's really difficult to play multiple colors next to it. I think one color or two colors at the most is probably a good idea. Also, you want to look at the casting cost of your colored spells because if they have a double white, or in this case, a double red in the casting cost, it can be really difficult. So let's take a look at the red sources because I think that's really important to make this Rock Hydra plan work. So we see, I believe, seven basic mountains. We see a Hammerheim that also produces red and a Ruby. So together, that's nine red sources. Perhaps it's kind of hard to see. Maybe he has an extra Mountain, maybe you can let me know, you in the comments. So then you're playing with 10 red sources. I think 10 red sources is kind of good if you want to, you know, be able to cast your double red spells. The reason I'm saying this is because I've played uh, Tron with the color white next to it. And I a card that I really love is Argivian Archaeologist. And I love the flavor of playing the Tron lands with the Archaeologist. But then at a certain point, I was like, am I actually using the Archaeologist? Do I ever have two white mana? Am I able to cast it when I cast it? Does it stay alive? If it stays alive, do I have the white mana to use it? Or will my opponent, for example, disenchant or shatter my Mox Pearl, you know, when, when I cast the, um, the Archaeologist? So I started tallying, you know, in each match how often I used it. And guess what? Eight out of the 10 games, I wasn't able to use my, um, my Archaeologist. And I only... Uh, put a tally mark on when I actually got it in my hand, right? So there are also a lot of games where you don't draw it. I didn't include those. To just to, so just to get my point across, it turned out it wasn't uh, good enough, or I just didn't have, well, good enough is not the right word, but I didn't have the right mana to support playing this double white creature with also an ability that you have to activate with double white. Now, of course, there's a big difference with Rock Hydra because with Rock Hydra, you don't have an ability where you've got to pay a double red. Of course, you do have the ability to let it grow heads, which is pretty cool, but that's three red. That's highly unlikely to happen with this deck. But still, I think there are enough red sources to make the Rock Hydra work. Even if it doesn't, I guess we're gonna find that out in this, in this match, right? If we look at the rest of the deck, it's so cool. I see Dragon Engine, which is awesome. I see Mana Barbs, which I think is it's really cool, right? It's going to hurt the opponent for using lands. I like how that works with the Tron lands, right? Because he can tap like an Urza's Tower if he's got Tron active. 
then he gets three mana, only takes one point of damage from the barbs. But of course, for me, the opponent, my lands only tap for one mana. So I just take one damage per mana, basically. So it's really nice to combine mana barbs with Tron. I really like that. I also love to see the... Um, uh, the the two, uh, what are they called again? I play with it myself as well. A uh, Knowledge Vault. So there are two Knowledge Vaults in this deck. I think Knowledge Vault, when you play with it, you find out how cool it is. So it's two and tap. Then the top card of your uh, library actually goes under the Knowledge Vault. So it's exiled from the game. Then if you sack the Knowledge Vault and that sacking is for zero, you don't have to tap it. So you can tap it, get a card underneath it, and then sack it. And you've got an extra card. But when you sack it, all the cards underneath the Knowledge Vault, so they're exiled, or going to your hand but however you do need to discard your hand so you know you don't want to use the knowledge vault when you've got seven cards in hand unless there are of course you know seven really bad cards but in general you don't want to do that so you want to wait until you've played out your hand or you only have cards in your hand that are not really helpful and then you can sack the knowledge vault and you can get all those cards i think knowledge vault it's a really cool card i'm also playing it in my deck actually talking about that let's take a look at my deck backwater poison and here we see my deck Backwater Poison. So this is really an old school poison deck, right? And I know that a lot of people, you know, have tried poison because it just, it's, it, it's such an inviting strategy because in the game of old school, there are only two cards that have poison. Pit Scorpion, a 1-1 one, one that puts one poison counter, uh, you know, on the opponent whenever it damages the opponent. And then you have Marsh Viper. And Marsh Viper is slightly better because it is more expensive to cast, though. It's one green and three. It's a one, two from the dark. But what if Marsh Viper damages any player, he or she gets two poison counters instead of one. So it's better. The cool thing is that I believe in one of the new sets, you now have this mechanic called Toxic. That's ex exactly what these, uh, you know, these cards do because they and they deal regular damage and they put a poison counter on. So it's kind of like the way Toxic works. So they don't have Infect. I think that's the term that you would use uh, today. So this is kind of Toxic, right? What they have. Anyway, um, what I want to do is pretty obvious, right? I want to try to to put 10 poison counters on my opponent and that way win the game. Um, how do I want to accomplish that? Well, I've got a land removal plan. So my plan is to ramp up with Elves of the Deep Shadow and at the same time kind of ramp down on my opponent is that a word can you say that anyway you know what i mean i want to slow my opponent down so i want to really win the tempo game i want to play sinkhole i want to play ice storm i want to keep him really low on lance at the same time use my elves of the deep shadow to potentially cast you know a pit scorpion or a marsh viper in turn two or turn three i'm also playing with uh, the moxin and the soul ring so i'm trying to get the ramp in um, I'm also playing with Crumbles, so the Crumbles are going to be pointed at those Moxen of my opponent, or the Mana Vault of my opponent, or the Soul Ring. I really want to try to keep him down a mana. Then, even when he when he's able to cast a creature, I want to use Paralyze, tap the creature down, and again, force my opponent to use the mana that he's got left to untap his creature. You know, that's that, that's got to be really frustrating. So he can choose, or play something out, or use all his mana, if he's got four, four land, right, for Paralyze and untap his creature. And the nice thing about Paralyze is even if the creature of the opponent is untapped, when you cast it in Shant Creature, it taps the creature down, making an opening for my poison forces. So that's really what my deck wants to do. It's not complicated. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Hopefully it's going to work. I've played this deck a few times now. Usually it doesn't work, but, <laughs> but I do think that in, in Swedish... The Poison deck seems to be a little bit better than in formats that allow Fallen Empires. And the reason is Aeopile. So I've noticed that Aeopile is just a killer. Like it's this artifact to, to cast. You can sack it, can deal two damage to any target. And Aeopile can just kill my uh, my poison creatures, right? Um, looking at the deck, by the way, you may think, why is Hypnotic Spectre in this deck? It's not a poison creature. Absolutely right. Hypnotic Spectre is kind of my lightning rod in the deck. You know, when I play a hippie, you kind of force your opponent to use the removal that he or she has on the hippie. So I'm like, fine, kill the hippie. After that, I play my pit scorpion and you're going to get some poison counters on your ass. You know, so that's the, that's the strategy. Oh man, look at this deck. It makes me smile. Let's go to the match and see if I can put some poison counters on my opponent today. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Yoop on the play. He's playing his Rock and Tron deck. So Rock, Hydras, and Tron, starting with the Glasses of Earth. So oh, that's going to be annoying. So now he's activating his Glasses after my draw step. I'm playing a Poison deck, Backwater Poison, Green and Black. Now he can see my hand. 
And I'm going to start here with an Elves of the Deep Shadow, turn one. That's a good opener for me. I also have an Ice Storm in hand, so I can use that next turn. I have a Crumble. Am I going to use that on the Glasses of Urza, though? I'm not sure. Let's first wait uh, to see what my opponent does. Ooh, that's risky. A Power Plant. So if he's got a Mine next turn, he's got Tron. Yeah, I'm probably going to use... Exactly, now he's going to use the uh, Glasses again. I'm probably going to use the Ice Storm here. And uh, destroying that tower. So I'm going to go to 19. So I'm destroying the tower. I actually think that I make a pretty good chance in this matchup. Because I am playing with so much uh, land removal. And of course that's really tough if you're playing Tron. I mean then again. You know he's got a lot of burn as well and stuff. Playing a power plant now. So I believe he's got two power plants. And a tower. There's another Elves of the Deep Shadow, so I can play a Swamp here. I can play an Elves of the Deep Shadow, and I can play in, uh, an Ice Storm. Actually going to attack, so I'm not using my Ice Storm. Interesting. Perhaps I'm waiting for him to play a Tower or a Mine, and I will use my Ice Storm on those, so I'm being a little bit selective. I believe this is another power plant, right? Power plant number three. And there's the pass. And of course he's going to use his glasses again, so that's a forest. I mean, I can attack him for two. That's exactly what I do, putting him on 17. I wonder if I... I mean, I think I could use the Ice Storm. I mean, I can wait for him to play a colored source, although I'm... I'm I don't know if he's playing any colors at this stage in the game, of course. But perhaps I'm waiting for him to play a mine or a tower or a colored source. Here we go. That's a mountain. So I'm expecting me to use my Ice Storm next turn on the mountain. Oh, Juggernaut, though. 5-3 has to attack each turn. Artifact creature, so I can use my Crumble. I could also play an Ice Storm and play... A Paralyze, that would actually be a good move. So I'm playing an Ice Storm here on the mountain. And a Paralyze exactly on the Juggernaut. And attacking him here for two. I also have my Serpent Generator there. That is six to cast and I can start making little 1-1 one -one snake tokens that have poison. So that is pretty cool. It's like a token, uh, a Serpent Generator generates Serpent's so that could be a possibility for me next turn. And, uh, oh, there we go. My opponent is probably looking for a Paralyze in his binder. But can't find it, I guess. Anyway, that Paralyze is on the Juggernaut. He doesn't have the mana to untap the Juggernaut. There is a Mine. So now he's playing out the Mine. If he finds a Tower, though, he's got a lot of mana. And I don't have any land removal anymore. There is a Knowledge Vault. So this card is from Legends. He can pay two and tap and put the top card of his library in exile under the Knowledge Vault. And now I've got another Ice Storm. I wonder if I if I should use it. I mean, I probably should. Because I don't want him to untap the Juggernaut. So I can use it on his mine. A little bit in the tank here, it seems. So I think I should just use it on the mine. And then just attack with my two elves. Okay, it looks like I'm going to attack first. Going to put Yoop here on 13, so he's quite low. The poison plan so far, by the way, is not working at all. I've, I've been able to put zero poison counters on there. Oh, it looks like I'm doing something else. I'm going to play a Serpent Generator. Okay, I thought I was attacking. Maybe I changed my mind. I'm playing a Serpent Generator. And now I wonder if my opponent is going to untap the Juggernaut. So this is a bit of a risky move from my side. Because remember, I could have also just played the Ice Storm on the mine, attacked for two. That probably would have been the better move, to be honest. So Yupir is untapping the Juggernaut, which I'm actually happy with. Because if he would keep would just untap his lands and draw into another tower, that would have been, you know, devastating. Or potentially devastating. He's drawing another mine, by the way. Attacking me for 5 here, so I'm going to drop to 12. And now remember, next turn he's going to make the decision. Again, that's why I like Paralyze so much. You know, especially on a Juggernaut, you have to attack. And then are you going to pay 4 again? 
I am on 12, by the way. Maybe you're wondering, where is the damage coming from? Well, every time I tap the Elves of the Deep Shadow, I ping myself for one. And of course, I just took five damage from the Juggernaut. There's a Sylvan Library. That is quite interesting. And I can tell you, it's really annoying to play against Glasses of Urza. Every time I play against it, I'm like, maybe I should play it in my deck. In my Timmy Spellbook deck, the Mono Blue Control. Anyway, playing a Sylvan Library. And I'm just not using the Ice Storm, right? I'm, the, the problem now is that my opponent's got two mines. So I can Ice Storm one of the mines, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't cancel out Tron. If he's going to draw into a tower, I mean, it is what it is. I really want to keep the Ice Storm for or for the tower or for another... Um, or for another mountain. Anyway, let's see if he untaps. Yeah, he untaps the Juggernaut again. Interesting. So he is going to attack with the Juggernaut. I'm on 12. I wonder what I'm going to do. I can use, of course, the Crumble. But I can also make a Serpent, actually. So taking two damage. Yeah, going to generate a Serpent. The problem of this strategy is, though, yeah, okay, I can jump with it. But the problem here is that I'm still taking damage and I have to use so much mana to make this uh, this happen. I mean, it's interesting to see. I really want to keep that um, that crumble for, for something else, perhaps later for the Knowledge Vault. And it looks like he's now going to pass. And I get to look at the top three cards. So then he's probably going to use the glasses or he's going to wait. And he's going to use it after, after I've chosen one. So, I mean, I'm on 10. If my life, life total would have been a little bit, you know, more up, maybe if I've used the crumble on um, the juggernaut, I would have had more life. I would have had 10 extra life and I could have, well, actually I would have had five extra life, could have drawn an extra card. Playing a sinkhole here and probably an ice storm. Yeah, so now I'm using the strategy to try to keep him off of four lands so that he can no longer untap his juggernaut. And I'm going to attack him with the one elf that's left, knowing that he cannot untap the juggernaut anymore. And I think that he probably has a lot of red cards in hand. And this actually happens to me a lot when I play Tron myself. You know, I've got some Tron lands. I don't make Tron yet, but I'm missing the colored sources. He's asking how many land removal spells I've played. Oh, we're kind of talking about, yeah, of course I wanted to go for the mines, taking care of all the mines. Because now he only has got power plants left. There's a mountain. Okay, so this is really important for Yoop, right? I mean, red is his main color. And I'm on nine, you know. If he can he can burn me out, it's it's possible. I mean, I probably have a few turns, but you know, if he if he's got a bolt now put me on six, you know, and then slowly continue with that. Putting himself on thirteen, probably forgot about the damage from the Elves of the Deep Shadow attack of the last turn. Really wonder what he's gonna do. Passing the turn, that's good news for me. Look at my top three again. It would be really nice if I could find some more land removal to take care of that one mountain. I've already played two ice storms and a sinkhole. Drawing just one card for turn. It's a crumble. So now I've got two crumbles. I wonder what I'm going to do. Thinking about crumbling the glass is not doing it though. Attacking Yoop here for two. Going to put him on 11. Oh, he's going to bolt one of them. Interesting. I'm fine with that actually. Using a bolt on an elf instead of on my life. I'm fine with that. Then he's going to use the knowledge vault. So he's going to put the card under it. He cannot see what card it is. He's going to keep the juggernaut tapped or is he going to untap it? Let's see how he's going to untap it. Okay. I believe I saw a Rock Hydra there. Oh, there's a tower. So if he can find a mine, that would be really good for you. There's the attack for five. And look at that playing a crumble, even though I've got four mana open to also cast uh, a snake here to tap actually the Juggernaut. I think that probably would have been the better line of play, to be honest. 
I mean, I do know that I just drew into that extra crumble, but still I think it would have been better to just make a 1-1 one, one snake. Block with the snake. Anyway, the decision has been made. Drawing into a pit scorpion. Could cast a scorpion and then of course attack with the Elves of Deep Shadow. So attacking him for one, you're going to put him on 15. So he's still pretty high. Remember, he just got four extra lives because of that crumble. And I really think, ooh, double red. There's that Rock Hydra that we saw last turn. He got it from the top of his deck playing a Rock Hydra, a 4-4 now. It's really cool to see the Rock Hydra. Really nice. So that Rock Hydra is now a 4-4. And remember, when it takes damage, it loses a head, so it loses a counter, but he can pay one red to kind of protect the, uh, that from happening, prevent that from happening, I should say. And uh, he passed on the turn. So I'm looking at my top three cards here because of the Sylvan. Pick a strip mine. Okay, so I could strip a red source, I guess. So I'm still trying to attack the mana base. Oh, look at that, going for the tower. Interesting choice, not attacking. Could have played the Paralyze here. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that I didn't play the Paralyze and just attack with, uh, with the Elves of the Deep Shadow and with the Pit Scorpion. Or at least with the Pit Scorpion. This is a bit surprising. I wonder if Yup is going to attack now. Of course, I can then make a 1-1 one, one Snake. He's also not going to attack. So on end step, I'm going to make a Snake. And I mean, this turn, what I could do is actually put a Paralyze on the Hydra, attack with my two Poison Creatures and deal two points of damage and put two Poison Counters on my opponent. I mean, that would be a pretty good line of play, in, in my opinion. So going through now, going through my top three cards that I can look at because of the Sylvan. So I'm being very careful with my Sylvan because, you know, ever since I had it, I've been on a pretty low life total. So I just don't want to draw that extra card. Finding a Swamp here. I mean, I'm going to play the Paralyzed, right? That would make sense. Going to play a Crumble here on the Knowledge Vault in response to that action. So I'm kind of forcing him. I'm saying, okay, if you want to get the two cards, actually the one card, I guess. Okay, the two cards. If you want to get the the two cards, you got to sack your hand because you also have two cards in your hand. And he's actually allowing it to go. And um, I guess it would only be the one card. Because I, I, I played my crumble in response to his activation. Yeah, so he, he could have gotten one random card and lose two cards in his hand. So it makes sense that he, he didn't want to do that. He's drawing into a mine now, by the way, if he can find a tower. And then, of course, on end step, I'm going to make another snake. Maybe I'm, I, I wanna, maybe I'm being as conservative with the Paralyzed because I want to wait for the right moment. Because I can only tap his Hydra with the Paralyzed down only once. And then after that, he can untap it and he's got a blocker again. Another sinkhole. I mean, he could target the mine. There are already two mines in his graveyard. That would be mine number three. Yeah, targeting the mine. So I want to make sure that he cannot get Tron. Because Tron for him is a way towards the victory, right? He can, out of nowhere, he can like create a really big fireball if he gets Tron online. So I don't want that to happen. I don't want to die. I've got control of the game. I'm building my snake army. Another thing that I could do here, by the way, is attack with all my poison creatures. He could only kill one and he would get two poison counters. And I can keep doing that every single turn. So that would be, I guess, a five turn clock, which is still pretty slow. So I do understand that I'm not doing it, but taking a damage here on end step making another snake. And I guess I'm really lucky that Yoop is not really finding anything useful. 
I mean, he's got enough lands, right? He's got two mountains. He's got three Tron lands. He's got the workshop. But I guess he's he's not finding what he wants. There's another pit scorpion. So, I mean, this is a lot, like a lot of creatures. I'm really just waiting for that one moment. And I guess it's arrived because I'm playing the Paralyzed now. And I'm attacking full force. Going to deal five points of damage and he's going to get five poison counters. No, four poison counters because Elzo Deep Shadow, of course, doesn't have poison. But still, he's going to get four poison counters. It's looking pretty okay-ish for me. Also, because next turn, you know, as long as he only has one blocker, you know, I can just continue just attacking with everything. And yes, he can kill one by blocking it, but who cares? He's now on four poison counters. So next turn, I can attack him with five poison creatures. Look at that. I'm going to untap again. I don't know what Yupa's got in his hand, but I mean, it's not good. Or else he would have done something. Of course, he used four lands now to untap the Rock Hydra. I'm really liking how good Paralyze has been for me in this matchup because I'm really forcing Yup to make a choice, play something out or untap your creature, which is really not a position where you want to be in. My hand's empty though, and I really don't want to, you know, use four life to draw one extra card. I'm just, it's just too dangerous against a deck that plays red. You know, I'm on eight, we'll put me on four. Very risky. Anyway, attacking here with all my poison uh, creatures. Three serpents and two scorpions. Let's see what Yoop can do here. I mean, he's probably going to block one, right? Exactly. Going to pay a red to keep the counter on. He's going to take four points of damage. And he's going to get four poison counters. So now he's got eight poison counters in total. That's fantastic. I'm so, I can actually win it on poison next turn. That's amazing. Am I going to win this game one on poison? Okay, there's a Yoshin soldier, which is good, but it's not enough. I've got four attackers with poison lined up. It is not enough. I can make an extra serpent with my serpent generator. Oh, there's a detonate though. He's got to use it on one little snake. Oh, that means he's not going to die next turn. Although I can make a snake with my serpent generator. Don't forget to make one exactly on end step. Going to pay for, create another one. Going to untap. I think I've got the victory because he only has two blockers. He's got eight poison counters. I can attack him with four poison creatures. Am I going to win game one here? Attacking. There I go. Hopefully he doesn't have a bolt or anything else. Not attacking, of course, with the Elves of the Deep Shadow. Why would I? Am I winning it here? My opponent looking at his hand, tapping that one red. What is he going to do? No, he doesn't have it. He's got another detonate, but that's not going to do it for him. Winning here, putting my opponent on 10 poison counters. KO by poison. But of course, this is only game number one. So we're going to shuffle up and uh, we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Yoop, of course, being on the play after losing that first game. And let's see if I can win the second one as well. There is a Bayou from my side. No Elves of the Deep Shadow passing the turn. Oh, Workshop. What's he going to do with four? There's a Juggernaut. That is a problem. Hopefully I have a Paralyze. Paralyze will be ideal because he cannot use the Workshop for that. There's a Paralyze. Yes, that is awesome. This was really what I needed here. He cannot use the Workshop for anything else than cast Artifacts. So that Juggernaut is tapped for now. He is finding a Mine so Mine and Tower. Is he going to tap four? Does he have another Juggernaut? Perhaps I hope not. There's a Yoshin Soldier and an Atok. Oh, okay, that's a Hammerheim that land. It's not a mine, it's a Hammerheim. It, it's a really good start by my opponent here. There's immediate pressure. I mean, I probably have some land destruction, but is that really going to be enough? Ice Storm on the Workshop, I guess? Or maybe the Red Source, the Hammerheim? Turns out I need some time to think about this as well. I mean, it's kind of hard. It's on the red source. 
The thing is, like, he can only use the workshop to cast, and I'm like, he's already played out his Juggernaut. He's got two cards in hand. He's playing with a lot of red in his deck. I mean, it, it was a tough decision. Anyway, attack here for two. I'm going to drop to 18. He's going to pass. So I guess I made the right decision. No more threats from my opponent here. Hopefully, I have more land removal, and I can take care of the workshop as well. Then again, I also have to... Think about the potential Tron. He's got a mine and a tower, so it's it's really tough here to decide what to remove. Oh, playing a Marsh Viper. I thought I was playing another Ice Storm, but it's a Marsh Viper. One two creature from the dark, and uh, it's a really good poison creature, the best poison creature in the in, in the old school. When it damages the opponent, the opponent gets two poison counters. So Pit Scorpion only gives one, but the Marsh Viper gives two, and there's a mountain here for Yoop. I mean, it's looking really good for him. Attacking with the both, probably going to take the damage here. I don't want to risk losing my, my Viper. Then again, I mean, I might as well block the... Um... Oh, I blocked the Atok, and he's going to sack. So I guess I was looking at his mana and thinking he's almost to four. He can start untapping. Oh, there's a stone on my bayou. He can start untapping the Juggernaut. Maybe I can just block and offer him a trade. And he took it. Playing a Bayou. What can I do? There's an Ice Storm. Going to take care of the Mountain. I mean, also considering I, I had that Ice Storm, and maybe I just drew into it. Perhaps it would have been better to use the Marsh Viper to just block the uh, Yoshin Soldier. Then again, now the Juggernaut's out of the way. It could have become a threat later in the game. There's another Marsh Viper, so perhaps I was doing it because I had another Marsh Viper in hand. There's a Soul Ring. Yeah, so with that Soul Ring, the Juggernaut would have become a real threat. I mean, Paralyze is a good card, but it only does the job for you as long as you can kind of keep your opponent low on mana. So there was no attack by Yoop here. That's a little bit surprising. Don't really understand why he didn't attack, to be honest. Could have attacked with the Atok at least. There's another Marsh Viper. So I'm, fi I'm finding a lot of Marsh Vipers here, which is good, I guess. The problem, of course, is that Yoop already has some creatures on the board. Yeah, I got to tap four for my Viper, not three. So one card left. Looks like I'm thinking about attacking. Why would I do that? That would be really stupid. Okay, finding a strip mine. Could you use the strip mine to strip away the Urza's mine? That would be kind of funny. Strip mine on Urza's tower would make much more sense. Anyway, passing the turn. So I'm really focusing on his red mana now, I guess. There's a Glasses of Urza. He's going to wait until I draw my card for turn. Then he's going to use the Glasses to see what I have in my hand. So an Hypnotic Spectre and a Swamp. So the Spectre is looking really, really good. Also remember my opponent doesn't have any red sources, so there's no Bolt on the Hippie. This is really good for me. Let's see if my opponent can find a red source to kill the Hippie. I mean, if not, it's ideal. I can, you know, start dealing some damage for the air, forcing my opponent to discard. And you can see he's playing a little bit more aggressive here, blocking on a Marsh Viper again, kind of offering him a trade. They also just bounce off each other, so he could go for that as well. Look at that, sacking the glasses to destroy the snake. And he's passing the turn. Attacking here, of course, with the Hypnotic Spectre. Going to take two points of damage, but more importantly, he's going to lose a card in hand. Going to lose the middle card, which is a Bolt. Oh, that is painful for my opponent here. Tapping three. There's a Pit Scorpion. My biggest problem here is that Yoshin Soldier, though. If I can just get rid of the Yoshin Soldier, there's a Dragon Engine. Ah. It's just so tough to get, like, through the defenses here of Yoop. And it's also tough for Yoop at the same time, you know, because his big problem, again, offering to trade, blocking with the Viper. The problem for him is that he doesn't have anything flying. Look at that, sacking this soldier to kill the Viper. 
I mean, it's it's not too bad. I think for both of us, it's an acceptable trade. Using the strip mine now to take care of the tower because of that dragon engine. Dragon engine, of course, you can pay two to give it plus one plus O. Oh. So if you can find Tron, you can make a pretty big dragon engine. It's gonna lose another card. Let's see which one it is. Drop to 16, losing a card, gonna lose a detonate. It's not, it doesn't really matter that much. There is, I believe that, is that a power plant? I think so, power plant and mine. If he finds a tower, it would be really nice with the Dragon Engine. There's the attack with the Atok. I'm probably just going to take the damage here. Going to drop to 14. Going to untap. Attack for 2. Again, he's going to lose his last card in hand. He's going to drop to 14. I don't expect it to be a good one. Well, it's a Rock Hydra. And this is what I talked about actually in the deck tech section of this video, that it's so hard when you play Tron to also make sure that you've got enough colored mana sources. And that's exactly what's happening here. Of course, that and the combination of me playing with land removal is very unfortunate for my opponent. He is attacking here with the Dragon Engine. There's a crumble on the Dragon Engine. That means... Well, actually, it means nothing. I want to say it means he's opening up, but he didn't attack with the Atox, so... Yeah, this is not ideal for me. I need to get rid of that Atok or maybe find a Paralyze at the right time to put some poison counters on him. Yup just in top decking mode and I'm just attacking now. And, and this is really bad for Yup because all the red cards he draws, oh, that's so bad for him. Like, for example, this Lightning Bolt, he cannot play it out. This is really bad for him. I mean, he started off so well with the workshop and playing a lot of threats, but now, yeah, he just cannot find a red source. I mean, I forced him to discard, I think, like two bolts already. That's pretty painful. Playing a forest here, tapping six. There is a serpent generator. No, wow, look at that. Desert Twister, this is ideal for me. Dealing four points, it's looking so bad right now for my opponent. Oh my goodness, so he's going to get two Poison Counters. He just found a card that, again, it looks like he cannot play out. I'm going to untap. Look at the top three cards. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting it to. Uh, I wasn't expecting to get back into this game after I saw the start of uh, of my opponent. I thought it was toast, but now it's looking really, really good for me. He's gonna drop to five. He's gonna lose a stone rain. It's gonna go up to four poison counters, but those poison counters don't really matter at this point. It's gonna pass the turn. There is a Yoshin soldier. So that Yoshin Soldier at least can stop the, the Scorpions. But then again, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's so low now that it's not about poison counters anymore. At this point, it's about, um, it's really about the life total. I'm pointing out the synergy here, by the way, between Sylvan Library and um, Knowledge Vault. It's really nice because I now know what's on the top of my deck. So I know what I'm going to put in my Knowledge Vault. Anyway, attacking here for two, going to put Joop on three. I mean, this hippie is really ruining the match for him. Oh, again, a card he probably cannot play out. This must be super frustrating. I mean, he can attack with the Yoshin because he's got Vigilance. Anyway, using Knowledge Vault on end step. Attacking again, putting him on one. He's going to lose the card, I think. Showing another bolt, and he's like, you know what? It's over. Oh man, so better for you. What he needed, of course, was to top deck a mountain, play out the mountain, and next turn find the bolt, but it just didn't happen. And that means that game number two is also a winner here for the poison deck. I'm actually really happy about that. Yeah, poison deck is winning. Woohoo! Sorry, Yoop. I know it's kind of evil with my land removal, um, you know, against your Tron deck feel kind of bad but then again you know i mean 
I, I really wanted to win with my poison deck. You can't blame me. Anyway, uh, this was the episode of today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of our decks. And if you would build the Tron deck, with what color would you build it? And how many colored sources would you add? Let me know what your mana base would look like. I'm just curious to hear from you. Because like I said in the introduction, I love Tron and I love to tinker and try new things with Tron. I would also like to thank you once again. We've played each other so often here on the channel and it's always cool to see your decks. And what I like about this is you probably know that, you know, the deck is not optimal, but it's a cool deck. It wants to do something cool and I'm going to see if it works. I love that, man. I love that stuff. Anyway, uh, also, I'd like to thank you for watching, of course, another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. And if you want to also subscribe on the channel, if you're not a subs subscriber yet. And then there is one other thing that you can do as well is that um, is become a patron on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. It's a way to support me as a content creator. So if you like the videos I make, you can consider becoming a sponsor of the show. Check out uh, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. It already starts with $1 a month. And for that, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. Talking about the end scroll, let's take a look at our fantastic, wunderbar, amazing channel members and patrons. Here we go. Ik het als fikkertjes somber gezien.